Next slide, please. Uh, we're trying to understand this as a business proposition, a sequence of markets, a sequence of capabilities of vehicles. The first one we're working on is ancillary services. Uh, that's probably not understood by too many people in the audience, but it's, I'll show a graph in just a minute. But the reason we're looking at ancillary services is that it's higher revenue, it's technically simpler than bulk power and, and uh, emergency power, and uh, we can provide the protections that are needed and the signaling right inside the vehicle. So as the vehicle rolls off the production line, it's all ready to do this. Uh, also, it's very high revenue, so it helps with vehicles that will be initially expensive. Later, in terms of a business sequence, uh, we'll do things like wind leveling, demand response, and so forth. Those are large markets, but they're not as valuable per vehicle. So this is what a daily uh, dispatch of power, uh, starting at midnight there, uh, dropping down a bit. Uh, this is just a, a crude drawing here. But it, the power use ramps up during the early morning hours. It may peak. Uh, 7, 8, 9 a.m. as factories are coming on, businesses are opening, but yet at homes people are still making breakfast and so forth. Mid-afternoon it often peaks and then drops down in the evening. That's the familiar load curve of an electric utility. What's not as well known is, is superimposed on that are much smaller fluctuations, a few minutes each, and those have to be balanced by the grid operators, the people who manage these large grids in this area, it's PJM. Uh, PJM Interconnect. That's the little squiggle that you see there, and that market is, is a regulation market, and that's what we'll be using these cars for initially, <clears throat> not for these big swings. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to go into detail here, but this just shows that as you get larger plugs, that is a plug that can handle 50 amperes, 80 amperes, rather than 2 or 3 amperes, uh, the value of this market for regulation goes way up. Uh, the numbers are really quite surprising. A small plug like the Volt or a plug-in Prius, uh, the value for this market is around $5,000 over the whole life of the car. So you could re achieve $5,000 in value if you could sell at these wholesale prices. Um, <clears throat> At a 15 kilowatt plug, which is the, pl the cars that we'll be producing, uh, the value is almost $30,000. Uh, now, these markets will eventually saturate with something like 3 to 5 percent of the vehicle fleet. But there's a lot of value for this fast response regulation market if you design the car properly. Next slide. <clears throat> so we're using a, a small all-electric vehicle, which is a conversion shown in top. We're also using a fuel cell bus uh, for these, this regulation market, although that's not quite as practical. Next slide. <clears throat> Uh, and we're uh, connected to PJM. Our car is dispatched as if it were a generator. If you look on the left of this slide, this is from this is secure website uh, at the G grid operator's uh, site in um, uh, Norristown. <clears throat> uh, if you look on the left, you'll see one of those highlighted uh, items is V2G Car One. So that vehicle that you saw is a generator on the PJM dispatch queue. Uh, there's 1,300 generators controlled in the whole PJM region. It's about 20% of the country. And when that car is plugged in, it's internet connected. They can actually focus down on it and they can see characteristics of the vehicle, which is, you can see on the right there. They can see what the battery state of charge is, how many amps are going through the line, what the capability of the line is, and so forth. So we're controlled like a generator uh, when plugged in and, and internet connected. Next slide. <clears throat> Okay, so how do we do wind leveling with this? We're here we have to simulate. Uh, one vehicle is not enough to do anything significant on a wind farm. Uh, so next slide. <clears throat> I'm not going to get into all the assumptions, but we're taking uh, the, Del the proposed Delaware project, 230 megawatts, uh, fluctuates up and down uh, with that being the maximum. We're trying to level it at 88 megawatts. This is a simulation just as an example. And we're taking this one large offshore wind farm, and we're only going to use 4% of Delaware's cars to level that. Is that going to be enough? You'll see it's not quite enough, but it's an example. Uh, it's ex the same proportion would be running Delaware entirely from wind power, 100% wind powered, and half the fleet. 
Okay, so just so you get a sense, we're not trying to say every car is going to be electrified and available for wind leveling. Okay, so next slide. So this is what uh, wind uh, output from our wind farm will look like when it's built uh, 2011 or 2012. Um, this is in the summer where wind is much more erratic. This is more difficult to level. Uh, and you can see the dates are about a week apart. So you'll have three or four days with very low output from wind. <clears throat> next slide. So when you put the, this 4% of the vehicle fleet on top of this, the red is showing the vehicles are being asked to charge extra fast, to absorb those peaks in output of wind power. And the green is when the vehicles are being asked to discharge, to, let, to fill in the gaps of wind power. So what we see here on the top, the pink, is that we're, when there's excess wind power, 4% of the vehicle fleet will, in most cases, be able to absorb that. We have one long period of high output, uh, July 21st, uh, to 28th there on the right, the black shows we haven't been able to absorb all that excess wind with the vehicles. That's okay, you, you know, have transmission lines for that purpose, we send the power out and uh, sell it to Virginia or, or, uh, or Maryland or, or New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> so next slide. In the winter we've got a little bit different situation, much more output. Often the wind farm's running at its full rated capacity, but certainly not all the time. So what does this look like with the same 4% of the vehicle fleet leveling it? Next slide. Here we see much more of the black on top. In other words, we're filling up the vehicles. They're getting fully charged. We don't have enough storage to uh, fully absorb the extra, whereas uh, in this w more windy winter month, we're filling in two-thirds, three-quarters of the gaps. So the gaps below, you've seen a lot of green in those. We've got one there. It only gets about half the time around January 7th there. Um, but mostly we're filling in all the gaps with the vehicles. <clears throat> so this is an example of how you would use vehicles to fill in wind. Next slide. Uh, it will fill short gaps. It'll fill short excess. Uh, you can reduce what's called the ramp rate, make it easier for the grid operator to manage. But uh, you're, with the vehicles alone uh, and 100% wind or, you know, uh, the pr same proportion, 4% uh, <clears throat> in one wind farm, uh, it's not going to completely level it. You shouldn't think this is going to solve all of our storage problems. And <clears throat> wind is more difficult than solar. Uh, you could more easily level uh, solar. <clears throat> Okay, so we still need some other form of backup, either existing fossil plants that are run infrequently, more transmission, so you're sending power out when you've got excess, pulling it in when you don't have enough. Uh, but the vehicle fleet, uh, half the vehicle fleet,